me like. He be calling me like. He be calling me like. Burn, bitch. Um. Museum and uh, downstairs they've got the artist ball going on but uh, I decided I was gonna sneak up here to the fourth floor and walk through an exhibition of drawings by Jima Michel Basquiat now uh, well I think Jima Michel Basquiat was maybe one of the most highly recognized and uh, prolific artists uh, that's come out of the New York scene in the last, well, 30 years. And, uh, gosh, at this point, I guess he's been dead for nearly that long. Uh, I'm not going to have a chance to get the titles and dimensions of all this work, but uh, I guess they're calling this the, the hidden notebook, something like this. Wow, uh, so these were, I guess, notebooks that had not been seen, but he's got a great uh, script, great hand, and, uh, well, I actually bumped into Jean-Michel a couple of times while I was working at Utrecht. I made a couple of deliveries to his studio down on Great Jones Street. Well, this is, this is really a beautiful piece. It's untitled 1986. And, uh, well, this looks like graphite, uh, acrylic, maybe gesso on paper. But, uh, boy, this is the kind of stuff that he was doing that I love. And, uh, you know, because I watched him develop from probably oh, 1982, well, until he passed away, I believe, in 88, uh, it was interesting to see the way that uh, he changed. Well, uh, he's a great list maker. Jermushkin up, Pee Wee Nicholson, uh, junk and cigarettes. You know, in many ways, a lot of this stuff is like poetry. And uh, I noticed that as he uh, as he moved along in his career, that uh, the work seemed to get more and more involved with uh, language and text. Oh, by the way, I. Uh, I wanted to make a shout out to a viewer that recommended that I come up and see this and do a report. Somebody from Melbourne, Australia. So I'm just putting that out there. I'll read a little of the uh, wall text here. The total number of notebooks created by Basquiat remains unknown. But the eight examples on view here, produced between 1980 and about 1987, point to a consistent and deliberate practice that relates to the artist's larger studio work in illuminating ways. His choice of readily available marble composition books is in, in keeping with Basquiat's interest in everyday objects. 
Even when he could afford more durable materials, he continued to use the inexpensive composition book available at dime stores and corner delis. In composing these notebooks, Basquiat generally left the reverse side of each page blank. This format creates a clean open space facing each text and allows each page to function independently. Basquiat's controlled penmanship and conscientious use of all capital letters give the notebook writings an ornamental appearance that sets them apart from the mundane note-taking or traditional sketches. Best understood as autonomous works of art rather than preparatory studies for larger compositions, the notebooks often contain words and ideas that are not found in Basquiat's larger works. So here again, this is the kind of stuff that I love. So this is a major piece. I'd say this is at least uh, 8 by 10 feet. Un untitled 1982-83 oil stick colored pencil crayon and gouache on paper mounted on canvas. So it looks like these are pages from a notebook that uh, has been glued onto a nice canvas and then he's uh, put his little signature head in there crumbling on the top of it. oh I like this Hogarth's etchings of John Wilkes <laughs> well I think that uh, one of the things that has impressed me is that uh, these are untitled notebooks 1980 to 81. Although they, a lot of people have portrayed G. Michel as some kind of a wild child, uh, kind of a natural talent, uh, you can see that he was also, he was a smart guy and uh, spent a lot of time of systematically studying things, dealing with language. Okay, well, I remember seeing stuff like this at uh, one of his fun gallery shows. This has got to be back in the early 80s. It's titled All Beef. Acrylic and oil stick on canvas mounted on wood. And uh, I like the way that it's two-sided. Sort of like a street sign. <laughs> this is good. Lard. Ink on glass. Well, now we just have some of his head sketches ripped out of a sketchbook. I've seen that image again and again. I think one of the things that uh, appeals to a lot of people about G. Michel is that uh, huh. a lot of this stuff seems extremely simple, straightforward. It's untitled 1981. Uh, I like the buff color of the paper. Jimmy Best on his back in the sucker punch of his childhood. Jimmy Best on his back. Oh, I've got another one of these uh, two-sided freestanding pieces. Well, I think some of these are uh, photo stats. He's glued on. As I was saying, uh, I noticed that as he started to develop and towards, towards the end of his short life, I think he only lived to be 28 maybe, any baseball card production. Oh, here's a nice thing. Basquiat and language. Basquiat once said that he used words like brush strokes, treating words like visual elements in a composition. He freely arranged words and phrases in his notebooks as a designer would, balancing lines and shapes on a page and collaging together a wide range of subjects in a single composition. 
strategies such as inverted spelling, crossing out words, and the serial repetition of text are explored throughout his notebooks, writing, and large-scale works. Basquiat also used language poetically, choosing words for their descriptive as well as their lyrical qualities, and combining his own words with texts appropriated from his surroundings. Attuned to the rhythm and musical quality of words, Basquiat emphasized repetition and experimentation, testing letters, words for both their sounds and their constellations of meaning. Well, we'll keep moving here. Oh. So this is one of the books. Obviously they've ripped out the, the pages. It's Untitled Notebooks, 1980-81. A number of Basquiat's notebook entries take the form of lists. He included phrases, facts, and observations. Famous Negro athletes. Oh, this was a theme that he worked with a lot. These are untitled Crenn drawings, 1981, Crenn on paper. So I'd say these are all about uh, 12 by 10 inches. Um, if you go back in the Calm Report, uh, you can see a show that uh, Larry Gagosian held, I guess it was in 2013. And uh, I get through about maybe a third of the show before they catch me and run me out. But one of the points I made at that time was that uh, I thought that uh, Basquiat was a great colorist. And uh, other people said they thought that his work, his colors were muddy and uh, kind of intentionally funky and abject, but uh, I thought that they really uh, kind of expressed a, a color of the streets, something that you would see if you're, you know, if your eyes were open and you happened to be walking, you know, signs were repainted and kicked around, high and low. Basquiat's subjects are a heady blend of high and pop culture influences. Raised in a multilingual home, his mother was of Puerto Rican descent, his father from Haiti, Basquiat was a student of art history and world culture. Visiting the museums of New York City from a young age, he was also from an early age an avid reader, draftsman, and critical thinker. Often paying tribute to his works, in his works to great figures of Western art and literature, artists such as Gerard Terbosch and Leonardo da Vinci, and writers including Herman Melville and Mark Twain, he cleverly acknowledged both the significance of high culture and his own relationship to art, historical, and literary traditions. In the notebooks and other works, these references are juxtaposed with allusions to pop stars and athletes, everyday sights and sounds of urban life, children's games, city traffic, jazz music, advertisements, news headlines, and random incidents and even shopping lists, phone numbers, and personal notations. Old Tin, 1981. Oh, this is a beautiful little piece. This is like it's on an old uh, cabinet door. Oil on wood. And, uh, gosh, I'm not sure, but I think that uh, one of his pieces recently went at auction for 43, 44 million dollars, something like that. This is untitled 1988 acrylic and oil stick on canvas. So this was towards the end. Again, we've got the words, and that's some kind of a logo. Untitled Ter Bosch. It's a great uh, Dutch painter, I think. Her Bosch probably was able to capture silk and silk fabric better than anyone. Ter Bosch bore removing fleas from dog. Okay, so oh, there's the picture. Well, we'll go in and take a quick look here at the other end of the inspection ex exhibition. So they've got documentaries. I'm sure you could go on YouTube and see the entire thing here. 
This is untitled Leonardo da Vinci 1982. So this is probably acrylic and oil stick on paper. And that's probably about uh, 42 by 72. So four and a half by, well, three and a half by six feet. This is James Cohn reporting on Jean-Michel Basquiat the Unknown Notebooks here at the Brooklyn Museum. Thank you, Kate.